will not find your presence with them. We will not find your guidance, your instructions, Lord God. For as we know that there is a way that seems right unto me, but it is you, Lord God, that gives us the right path, that gives us the right choice, that gives us the right answer and direction, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. As right now, I empty myself of me, Lord God. And I allow you to have your way, Lord God. That my tongue is your pen. And the paper is the heart of the people, your people, Lord God. So Lord God, write your words, write your songs, write your hymns, write your poems, write whatsoever you want on our hearts, Lord God. That we should hide your words deep in our hearts. To obey them, to do them. So, Lord God, we thank you, we bless you, we love you, as we have your way, Lord God, and say amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So, today I am giving the assignment of talking about confessions, amen. which we are used to making confessions anyway, but I don't think we really understand that as we make confessions, that we're, act, that we're actively engaged in it. That many of us do it haphazardly. That it's, as we're stuck in traffic, mm -hmm. as our day is not going right, mm -hmm. we're making confessions, declarations. Mm -hmm. um, even if, I was to be honest, if in our everyday of being in a relationship with one another, we make declarations. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. wow. When our significant other gets on the wrong side of us, <laughs> yes. we make declarations. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to talk about how to use these declarations and confessions correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can Amen. see Amen. what we desire to see. Amen. I was at work, I've been noticing that God has been putting me in avenues of speaking more to people. Yeah. And I was speaking with a young lady and she just kept saying things that just kept, you know, like kicking me in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that she was telling me about her relationship, but the words she was using, she kept using, I hope, I don't know, <laughs> I think, mm -hmm. I would like to see, I don't know where it's going. Right. begin to let her know that what comes out of your mouth 
is what you will have. I said, have you not heard that you are a God? As Jesus said. And I said, let's go back to Genesis. When he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So if you're made in the same image and likeness of something, mm -hmm. then that will make you the very being that you're made in the image and likeness of. Mm -hmm. Just being, you know, rhetorical. Or right. If I was made in the image and likeness of a tree, I would be a tree. That's right. If I was made in the image and likeness of whatever animal, I would be that animal. Yes. But, thank God, we are made in the image and likeness of our creator. Amen. Amen. So not only do we have, um, and some would think that think that you would just have just a fragment or a piece of him. No, you have the very creator living inside of you. So as we have the very creator living inside of us, that means we have the same rights, privilege, and yes. power mm -hmm. of our creator. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that means that we can influence, interact, and even as our apostle been telling us, narrating our life yes. to what we want to see. Yes. Yes. So let's talk about this, these confess about confessions. Yes. That it is time for us to open up our mouth and begin to confess what we want to see and what we want in our life. Our confession set our life on a course that is phenomenal when it is based on the word. Amen. Thinking it alone does not manifest all its benefits, all our life's benefits. Confession sets our life up for blessings, favor, health, prosperity, victory, good welfare, and deliverance. God created us with a mouth and a voice to speak and call things into existence. And the tool of confession stirs heaven on our behalf. So we was given a mouth for a reason. Not to give people a piece of our mind. <laughs> As we would think, like, don't give them a piece of my mind. Don't let them know. <laughs> but in the moment of giving people a piece of our mind, letting them know who they can and cannot play with, we have not demonstrated our correct power. Mm -hmm. We have not demonstrated our rightful and God-given authority in the earth. Sure, we told them what bus stop they can get off on. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, yeah. we lost something in, in in that moment, that transaction. Mm -hmm. In every encounter with our fellow man, mm -hmm. it is a moment of transaction, mm -hmm. a moment of, this, of deposit and withdrawal. Yeah. Yeah. In my interaction with you, I can either deposit a good moment, a good experience, I can deposit life into you, mm -hmm. or death. Mm -hmm. But because the scriptures tell me In Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So more than life. We deposit um, transactions of death into our fellow man before we deposit life. Because we are sometimes emotional beings. We deposit transactions of death because, as they say, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. yeah. But we don't learn how to turn that around. Amen. That, that even not only turn it around for the people we interact with, mm -hmm. but we're going to turn it around for the one that we interact with in the mirror. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we are our own worst critics that right. Right. we tear ourselves down degrade ourselves, dismiss ourselves worse than our next than the next man or, or our fellow man could be. Mm -hmm. That we won't even give our own self a shot right. before somebody else would give us a shot. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Also a little a little scientific study that every human being we are made of chromosomes, mm -hmm. which
which is the basis of our DNA. And our DNA is little micro or miniature blueprints of ourselves. So every cell within our body is a me, us. And so our words have impact, so we are speaking to ourselves. So as even I myself have things that I don't like. Yeah. I don't like my nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would so I would like to get rid of them. But someone told me that's your beauty mark. Yeah. yeah. That's your beauty mark.
Start starting at verse 1. We all there? Yes. Yes. Right. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not, but if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. They will pause right there. James is telling us, especially we as elders, and for those that are listening on Facebook, that as we begin to receive our callings, not everybody calling is the pulpit. That when you receive your calling, you don't have to feel intimidated or pressured that I gotta go and preach. That might not be your calling. Your calling might be business, entrepreneurship. You might have that next business venture that's solving the need of me. That many need your products. Many need your services. Amen. Or you might have um, be a, that future clothing design that people are looking for a new style, a new brand that represents them or who they are. Something that stands out from everybody else. Because nowadays we're carving, carving copies of everybody else out there. Mm -hmm. And we need to be set apart yes. as we are. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That we're not called as the children of God, the people of God, the ambassadors and priests, the royal kingdom and queendom of God's priesthood. We're not meant to look like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go and stamp their labels on us for acceptance. We can create our own labels, our own name, our own brand. We stand out, we set apart. As you say, you're peculiar, you're different, you're yes. unique. Yes. Yes. So everybody's um, ministry does not necessarily negate that it has to be right here. Mm -hmm. It can be in sound, producing, mm -hmm. writing, mm -hmm. designing, mm -hmm. building, right. Amen. landscaping. Even as someone would think it's small, but it's a very big thing. Even mothers being at home with the children. Amen. That Amen. first interaction yes. before they get to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sets the impression of what that teacher is going to think of not only this child, mm -hmm. but of the home. Yeah. That a child's mannerisms tell that teacher a lot. Yeah. 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 So, in the beginning, I was saying, James was wanting, let us not all just run to become teachers. Amen. 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 <laughs> the Lord knows I sure didn't run to it. God says I cannot sit down and hide myself, so Amen. this is the lot that was given to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so James tells us that we all stumble in many things. That's many things we stumble at. Mm -hmm. But the word of God is, is one that we should not stumble at. That he tells us that if we would not stumble at that, we would be a perfect man. Not meaning that we won't make mistakes. Right. Meaning we'll be a complete man, a whole man, mm -hmm. a mature person. Mm -hmm. Because we will begin to understand the power and the authority that we have. Mm -hmm. How we can shape and set our world. Amen. How we can not only shape and set our world, but shape and set the worlds of those around us. The influence that we have been given to make impacts or ripples, waves, tsunamis in the world cause change. Oh, man. Now we begin to get into that thing, what we're talking about. But Abel, Abel also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they obey us. We, and we turn the whole body with that bit. Look also at ships, although 
they are so large and are driven and are driven by force wind. Mm -hmm. They are turned by a very small rudder mm -hmm. wherever the pilot desires. Mm -hmm. Even so the tongue is a little member. <coughs> it boasts great things. So with our tongue, it boasts great things. Mm -hmm. Just as we control many things, we control a horse as powerful as it is. Mm -hmm. It's big, it's muscular, mm -hmm. but when it's just a little small bit in its mouth, we tell it to go to the left or the right. Mm -hmm. We tell it to stop, we tell it to speed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the rudder of, of a ship, we and the uh, um, captain is piloting it. That wherever so when he turns the oar, mm -hmm. that's where the ship is going. Mm -hmm. And it's a small thing as it's compared to the vessel itself. Yeah. 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 Even so with the, with the sails catching the power of the wind. Yeah. It's a small thing, but it's used to set the direction of the boat. Yeah. And so likewise, James is telling us that our tongue sets the course and the direction of our life. Mm -hmm. He says, see how, a, see how great a forest, a little fire kindles, mm -hmm. and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Um, for my specific notes, I want to hear. Can somebody read that part in KJV? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and stands on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Yes. <laughs> So there's a word that I wanted that stood out to me as I was going through this. Iniquity. Okay, but what, what is iniquity? In Hebrew, it is, I might push you, so forgive me. Right. To bend, to twist, to distort. And so as I was, God, God, okay, Holy Spirit. So if, so if iniquity is to bend, to twist, and distort, what, what are you saying to me? He begins to say iniquity is the bending, the twisting, the distorting of God's word. <laughs> it is you trying to fit the word of God into your reality or sense of understanding. Wow. I'll give that to us again in case. Um, yeah. Yeah. Iniquity is the bending, the twisting, and the distorting of God's word. It is us trying to fit the word of God to our reality or sense of understanding. Or as I used to like saying, making it make sense. Wow. Mm -hmm. That I had that I had the plan and plot it, like it had to look how I needed it to look. Like, okay, God, okay, this looks like this. This is moving this way. So okay, I can I think I can do it. Or I would begin to tell God what he already knew. Mm -hmm. That I was giving him my facts, mm -hmm. thinking they was my truth, and he's like, oh, like, boy, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And so, as James tells us, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Mm -hmm. So what he's telling us is that the tongue mm -hmm. is a world mm -hmm. that bends, twists, and distorts the reality. of our own life. Mm -hmm. And so if we do not understand our tongue and the power that lies in it, 
from the truth and the reality that God intended for us to live, we will bend, twist, and distort God's, God's perfect or complete reality that he had um, purpose for us. That when I was younger, I used to, and I think I've mentioned this a couple of times, when I was younger, I used to have this reoccurring dream. Mm -hmm. That I was in this huge, massive city. And as I walked around the city, I kept hearing a voice tell me, I would that you would see yourself how I see you. Yeah. I would that you would see yourself how I see you. Yeah. And I'm just looking around like, okay, who, one, who's talking to me? Right. Two, okay. I would I really like to know how you see me because uh, this place you got me in is pretty nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm feeling like hey. <laughs> wow. So I really like to know how you see me then. Because yeah. I'm feeling small. <laughs> <laughs> and through the course of my life, that's the very opposite of what he's telling me. Mm -hmm. I don't see you as small. Yeah. Wow. You're large. Yeah. You're massive. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a giant. Yeah. You're that. When you walk, the ground um, quakes. And that's how God is telling us that's what we are. We are that, that um, when Israel, when the children of Israel was coming into that promised land, they had a conversation with themselves. Not with the inhabitants, but with themselves. They said, we can't do this. We can't take the land. We have put grasshoppers in that side. Right. Because the inhabitants, they tell them that, you know what, you go about the grass on. Right, right. No. They didn't even have a conversation. No. That when they actually encountered the children of Israel, they was already afraid of the children of Israel. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But the children of Israel let their little small member in their mouth mm -hmm. twist and bend and distort the reality of what God had already said. Because God had already given them, mm -hmm. given the inhabitants to them. Mm -hmm. How much more different would the narration be if all of them had the same mindset of Joshua King? Mm -hmm. We can take it. This is ours. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. As the apostles say, let's pray. Let's go eat them. Let's go eat them. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. Mm -hmm. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Mm -hmm. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men. Who have been made in the similitude of God. Mm -hmm. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. My brother, these things ought not be so. Mm -hmm. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water? Mm -hmm. Fresh water and salt water. Mm -hmm. From the same opening. Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives? Or a grapevine? Bear figs. Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. So we have to figure out which one we're going to do with our mouths. Are we going to speak death or are we going to speak life? Also, in Also in Proverbs 18, 21, 
the verse up tells us this that a man's that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Mm -hmm. Then it tells us that death and life yeah. and the power of the tongue. So with my tongue, either I'm gonna speak death or I'm gonna speak life. Because I understand that just as God has set the natural force of creation, that when he made rivers and streams which flow into oceans and seas, that these rivers and streams of natural force, I'm not going to go to a river and get both fresh water and salt water. Mm -hmm. That I'm not going to go on the left side of the river and say, okay, this is salty, so I can get salt water here. While I go on the right side, I can get fresh water here. Right. James says either, either one or the other. You're not going to get both. Mm -hmm. So likewise, from our life, as James told us, that man has learned how to tame every creature mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. I expect you look on YouTube or any other multimedia stream, and you can see how man has tamed every manner of beast the most exotic and dangerous beast. Yes. You see men having tigers and lions and bears with mice, pits. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yet man has not learned how to tame the small little pink thing in our mind. Amen. Amen. We've learned how to control massive ships with small things, with small rudders and sails. Yeah. Even at Greer Island when we went and we had a ball and got in the kayaks. Mm -hmm. With the oars, we decide which, which, whether you want to go um, to the right or to the left, mm -hmm. forward or backwards. Mm -hmm. But yet we have not learned to set the course of motion with our tongues. Wow. That we're just haphazardly just drifting in life. Mm -hmm. In fact, <coughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, there was one kayak that we was using, <laughs> and the whole time we were trying to figure out why can't we not control this kayak the way it should be controlled? Because mm -hmm. it was the yellow one that we was having trouble with, and the green one, well, I love that green one, it was yeah. going. <laughs> and so first time I see my son using it, I was like, okay, well, maybe he's inexperienced. Maybe he don't have the muscular endurance to control it the way he needs to, because mm -hmm. I just see him just going around in a circle and I'm like, <laughs> okay, like, no, you don't do it like that. Like, you know, you got to get that, get your rhythm, uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. right. So, so he met, we went out and then he made it back and I helped him come in. And so, then I got in it. Well, first I got in the green. Uh -huh. and, I, and so, I didn't know at the time, Holy oh, Spirit was showing me something. It's like, okay, you saw that. I'm going to show you something. Get, get in this one. And so I got in it. And so I had to get the rhythm, I'm like, okay. And then as I was teasing him, like, okay. Like, like, like how did you be in trouble? Like, how did you, you know, I mean, like, like you won the race, like. Right. And so, so I got, got the rhythm, got the motion up, came right. in. And so then, and Chris was going to go out and do it. He got the green one out on him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he got the yellow one. I was like, I'm just drifting. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> just <laughs> Right, right, left, left. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So 
Oh, okay, maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Right. It wasn't until skip, skip forward now to God said, okay, y'all done had fun, now it's time for y'all to go home. Right. Or rather, you ain't got to go home, but you got to leave here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, it's coming in. So mm -hmm. as we're depleting, I mean, deflating the rafts mm -hmm. and the kayaks and whatnot, there's one critical part that I noticed that was missing. The fin. <laughs> the fin is what controls it. The fin is what cuts through the water that keeps it on a straight course. And I was like, you mean to tell me this little thing that I forgot as I blew up the raft, I forgot to put that little piece on it. That was the part that helped me to control it. Wow. Just like God says, James is telling us, we learn to control everything yeah. with just small little things. And you want to think that that little thing that's no bigger yeah. than the size of this mic mm -hmm. will have such a huge impact on how mm -hmm. the force of the motion of that vessel moves. Mm -hmm. So likewise, when our tongue, so small, mm -hmm. but it impacts our life in a major way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That either we will not see the promise and blessings that this book tells us that we're supposed to have, mm -hmm. or we will see and have everything. As the apostle said, you need to tell me, I'm going to read this book, mm -hmm. read how it bless everybody else, yeah. 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 and think that it doesn't pertain to me because right. it's just something that happened in the back of the day. Right. It's just a book. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was Joshua. Yeah. That was Jesus. Yeah. I ain't Jesus, so I, did. I didn't do it. Right. Amen. Amen. Something is wrong with that. Yes. Because as our apostle said, if I cannot get the very reproduction of the of the product that I see in this book, and God knew that that's where I was. So that's all faces now. When we was in the world, we had fun. Yeah, we, we enjoyed ourselves yes, to the fullest. Yeah. Yes. So likewise, God intends for us. Um, I'm going to say it by memory, and someone can find it. Beloved, I would that you have life and prosper even as I told you prosper. So Jesus is telling us that I want you to be blessed. I want you to prosper. Not just your soul. And as the apostle been telling us, the three I need for salvation. That the first level or the first dimension of salvation is just us believing. We believe that he died. We believe he rose. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's just first level. That's just surface right there. Mm -hmm. As I heard, like I said, God had been putting in the company of strange conversations that my co workers amongst me were saying, Well, God knows my heart. Because the gentleman was teasing that. Mm -hmm. But I know, wait, when the last time you've been to church? And the other one was like, Well, God knows my heart. It's like, probably been like about two years. Like, oh, well, God knows my heart. Yeah. But the funny thing about God knowing our heart, Come on. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 19 through 20. Let's go there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Amen. Let me know when we're all there. Amen. 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 Okay. So, immediately when I heard my co-worker say, but God knows my heart, immediately this is what I heard Holy Spirit say. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. So, though God knows our heart, and that's the excuse that we try and use, oh, well, God knows my heart. As though God is going to continue to wink, wink, wink at us. For all those, for a past time, he winked at our ignorance. Yeah. But just as with your natural truth, the soul life out of the God. There are things we see our children do to me. Everybody look at We even might even be a black girl, oh, that's cute. Yeah. They, yeah. It's cute when your nine month year old might tingle themselves. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm six and tingle themselves, I'm like, there's something wrong with you. Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's it. So that's why I was like, okay. You should do when you first started out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I expected yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But 10 years from this day, yeah. something wrong. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, first first Corinthians two. And 
Facebook, but I want you to understand is, is that God is not as concerned with your sin as you are. That he already took care of you. That what he wants you to understand that as being partnered with him, that him through you and in you can do mirac miraculous and mighty things. Mm -hmm. That what he's speaking inwardly to you mm -hmm. can dynamically change the course and the flow of your life as you, if you would just speak it outwardly. Mm -hmm. And not just speak it, but believe it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not hope it, not think it. As I heard some people say, well, you know, I, I ain't making, I'm not going to confess it, I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know, the devil is listening. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got that much power? Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Verse 27, but might be a little bit um, higher than that. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Romans 3? Yeah. Romans 8, I made a mistake. Romans chapter 8. Okay. 27 through 29. But starting 26. I'll bring it in a little bit better. Okay. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself makes intercessory for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. Now he who share, who searches for the heart knows what the man, thank you, who knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, for for he also predestined to be confirmed to the conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So, we're seeing that even that that is not an excuse that just as Alexis called us a while back that we bury in our excuses, send in our excuses to him. Yeah. That we cannot use the excuse that, well, God knows my heart. Yeah. God is just going to wink at me. But God says, you know what? Yeah, I know your heart. Mm -hmm. It's twisted. It's distorted. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bent. Mm -hmm. you trying, you trying to shake my word is to your reality. Mm -hmm. So you won't be complacent. You won't be comfortable. Mm -hmm. But just as you might not know your heart, but I gave you a comfort. I gave you someone that knows yeah. your heart, that knows your mind. Yeah. And just as he has searched your mind and knows your mind, he will give you my mind. Right. He will give you my heart. Mm -hmm. And he will reveal to you the things that I have spoken to him. 
He will bring you into remembrance of all things that I have spoken. Yeah. That's why he said that um, that we will be com conformed to the image of his son. That whom he foreknew, who he already knew, he already predestined in the course of the time that I'm going to bring you to the image and the likeness of my son. Not here, but here. Because we're already in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he said, now I need to, just as with the clay that God made man, he says, now your mind is like clay, and I need to reform it. I need to reshape it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's been shaped and formed to this image and likeness of the world, yeah. so I have to reshape it now. That's why it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, the word of God. Mm -hmm. And as our apostle said, over and over mm -hmm. and over mm -hmm. and over some more yeah. and over some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might not be that that conforming might not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It might not be changed in the twinkling of an eye like that. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, sometimes we're a little hard here. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Sometimes we're a little rebellious. We don't want to get it. We yes, so right. rather we get it, but we refuse to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, as a, as a pastor, we might be meandering around like this, yeah. like this, yeah. trying to make sense of like, I, I just don't get it. It don't make right. sense. But as we learn, it don't have to make sense. It just needs to make spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some things that make sense that God, that as God tells us, like, if I tell you, stick your hand on fire. Mm -hmm. Now, your senses will tell you, well, first of all, oh, my God, look at that. <laughs> but should you haphazardly listen to that instruction, right. your senses is going to tell you something. Yeah. That's right. It will tell you that's hot. That's right. Move my hand. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So there are some things that God speaks to the senses. Right. But at the same time, there is understanding the balance of when we need to be blind to what's going on around us. Okay. Like for instance, my case. Mm -hmm. I had to learn not to re re retort back to God what he already knew. Mm -hmm. Like what God, you know, my credit says this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my bank account says this, God. But I don't know if I can do that. I don't see how I'm going to Make right. this work, God, and God right. is like, boy, if you do this my thing, you'll see that the path is a lot straighter than you than you can see. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. The path is already lit for you. You don't have to right. figure out the path. Yeah. Right. You don't have to figure out the next step. Yeah. You don't have to, uh, as we learned from our apostles, we don't have to be figuring the next step. That's right. That's right. You know, I already figured it for you. It's exactly. already happening. That's right. It's already told yes. and summed up. Yes. You just need to obey. That's, That's, right. Right. That's, That's it. That's it. That's it. As Proverbs um, 3, um, 5 and 6 says, lay down to our own understanding, but trust in the Lord our God with all our heart. Yeah. He will direct our paths. Or he will give you the right path. Amen. Or he will give you the right answer. Yeah. Amen. You know, I'm telling myself. Come on. <laughs> um, you know when you was back in school, when I was back in school, with me. When I was back in school, and you taking a test, you didn't study for it. Mm -hmm. I ain't study for it. Right. And look over there, I look over there for the Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody just said the gun is a little too right. I don't want to keep saying anything like that. Mm -hmm. Hey. We have the number such and such. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Partner 
come with the Holy Spirit, we can pass. We can win this thing. In fact, what is what is the one of July? Victory. Victory. So if the one of July is victory, the Holy Spirit wants us to win. in Matthew 14, verse 22, where Peter gets out the boat. Yes. That, as we read in that text, it didn't say that, we, we heard a lot that, that, that uh, and we assumed, as many teachers um, before us, mm -hmm. had us to think that Jesus carried Peter back to the boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in that text do we read Jesus carried him. 
that they both walked back to that boat. They both climbed back in the boat. Yeah. After he showed Peter, you can do what I tell you. Amen. That just as you see me, mm -hmm. when you see it that I am, the word of God presence is what mm -hmm. his power is. So outside of the boat was his power Amen. to walk upon the sea. Yes. So as we see our God, mm -hmm. as we see Holy Spirit out of the outside of our boat, mm -hmm. conquering and dominating the thing that threatens to overwhelm us, swallow us, yes. he says, you just come out here with me. Amen. I show you that you can overcome it, that you can that you can overwhelm it. Amen. 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 As I shared with Alexa, um, with some person, we have heard the scripture say that we are more than a conqueror. Yes. But Holy Spirit gave me something else to add to that. Because you are more than a conqueror, mm -hmm. you are a dominator. Woo! Amen. You dominate every aspect of your yes. life. Yeah. And you're not a victim of your life. You're not a product yeah. of your life. Yeah. 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 Because I'm in you and with you. Yeah. You're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Right. So if you're more than a conqueror, you are a dominator. Dominator. So we our tongue, setting down, setting out the course of our life correctly yeah. as we're learning this thing. Let us down, begin to start dominating. Amen. 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 